Hello, so here we will talk about the intravenous fluids. We will explain all the types and informations that you need to know about the intravenous fluids as a healthcare worker. Please like this video so it reaches more people. And let's start by talking about the intravenous fluid types. So we have two major types of the intravenous fluids and those are the crystalloids and the colloids. So the crystalloids are solutions that contain small molecules that can pass through semi-permeable membranes like the blood vessel walls and they are typically composed of water, electrolytes like the sodium, potassium, chloride and small molecules like glucose. Examples of the crystalloids are the normal saline, the half saline and the dextrose 5% water. On the other hand we have the colloids and those are solutions that contain larger molecules like proteins which don't cross the semi-permeable membranes like the blood vessel walls and they are expensive. Examples for them are the albumin, the fresh frozen plasma and the cryoprecipitate. And on this picture here we have the fresh frozen plasma as seen here. And from this information you can see that the difference between the crystalloids and the colloids is that the colloids stay in the intravascular space, they don't uh, cross outside the vessels as much as the crystalloids do and this would make them superior in supplying fluids during that require the fluid to stay inside the circulation. Uh, but the colloids are uh, expensive while the crystalloids are pretty cheap and they are available everywhere. So that's why the crystalloids are used much more in fluid supplementation to patients. Examples of the crystalloids are the normal saline, the Ringer's lactate, the half saline, the dextrose 5 water, and the hypertonic saline. And we will explain them in the next slides. So let's start with the normal saline. So the normal saline is 0.9% normal saline. That's how it is written. So on the bottle you can see 0.9% normal uh, NACL. And we will explain all those uh, terms now. So the saline means a fluid that contains salt. And normal saline is 9 grams of NACL, which is a salt, dissolved in 1 liter of water. That is why it is 0.9% because 9 grams of NACL dissolved in 1000 milliliters. So it would be 0.9% uh, normal saline. And it is approximately the same osmolarity as plasma. It is isotonic and that is why it is called normal. So the normal in the normal saline is because it is isotonic, the, sal the saline because it is salt and the ovoid 9% because it is 90 grams in 1000 milliliters. So the saline osmolarity is 308 milliosmoles per liter while the plasma is from 275 to 295. So it is pretty close, that is why it is isotonic. So the normal saline is used in volume replacement in hypovolemic and septic shocks. It's also used in wound care, in cleaning and irrigating wounds to help prevent infection and promote wound healing. And it is used for diluting medications and administration of IV medications and finally it is used in laboratory and diagnostic procedures. There is one negative point about the normal saline is that if the normal saline is supplied in high quantities during hypovolemic shock for example, during septic shocks, during other type of shocks where you have to supply high quantities, if you supply the patient with normal saline this would lead to influx of chloride ions because it contains chloride because it is NaCl and this causes the bicarbonate ions to shift into the cells which causes acidosis because the 
uh, because the bicarbonate is alkaline, so when it shifts inside the cells, did we, this would make the intravascular space uh, acidotic. And because of the acidosis, the potassium shifts out of the cell and into the circulation, which leads to hyperkalemia. And that is why the lactated ringers are superior in supplying large quantities. Because the normal saline, as we said, it leads to hyperkalemia and it leads to acidosis when it's supplied in high quantities. While the ringers lactate, as we will explain uh, next, they don't cause these problems. Now let's talk about the ringers lactate. So it is written right, like that, RI lactate, ringers lactate. So it is composed of sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, and lactate. Some solutions are only called ringers because they don't contain the, la the lactate part, but uh, other solutions are ringers lactate because they do contain the lactate part and they are the better solutions and we will know why now. So the osmolarity of the ringers lactate is 286, which is isotonic because it is close to the plasma osmolarity and the lactate is metabolized to bicarbonate. So it acts as a buffer in acidosis and doesn't cause hyperkalemia. So the Ringer's lactate would solve both of the problems, the acidosis and the hyperkalemia, just by it containing lactate, because the lactate will convert to bicarbonate and the bicarbonate will solve the problem of the acidosis, it doesn't cause hyperkalemia. And it is the same uses as the normal saline, but it is better in supplying large quantities. And the concentration of potassium in Ringer's lactate is lower than the plasma potassium. And that is why when given to hyperkalemic patient, it lowers the potassium. Because the volume to potassium in, in the Ringer's is less than the volume to potassium in the plasma. So when you give less potassium in a, in, in a specific volume to higher potassium in a specific volume, this would ultimately lead to decreasing the uh, potassium level in the plasma. Now let's talk about the half saline. So it is 0.45% of the normal saline, meaning it is 4.5 grams of NaCl dissolved in one liter of water and it, it is and its osmolarity is about 140 milliosmoles per liter, so it is hypotonic relative to the plasma. Because remember, the plasma osmolar osmolality is from 275 to 295, and the half saline is 140, so it is hypotonic. And it doesn't remain intravascular, it shifts to, to the tissues, because remember, uh, the fluid would shift into the higher osmolarity because of the blood being less osmolarity in case we give half saline the saline the half saline would go ahead and shift to the tissues because they are higher osmolarity and it is used in replacing fluids in patients who have hypovolemia with hypernatremia because it has less sodium so it would be better used for hypernatremia and it is also used as maintenance fluid to replace daily losses in patients with low oral intake. Now comes the D5W. The D is for dextrose, the 5 is for 5% and the W for in water. The osmolarity of the fluid is 255, so it is hypotonic and it is used for calorie and fluid replacement and dilution of medications. There is another fluid that contains dextrose and that is the D5NS. The D is for dextrose, the 5 is for 5% and the NS is for normal saline. So it would be like that. The, it would be written like that. Uh, glucose 5% and NaCl 0.9%. And it is isotonic and it is used in nutritional support and hydration. Finally, let's talk about the hypertonic saline. It is 3% saline, so it is about 30 grams of 
uh, of NaCl dissolved in 1000 milliliters of water and it is hypertonic because it is osmolarity is about 900 while the plasma is from 275 to 295 so it is much higher than the plasma so it is hypertonic and it draws the fluid out of tissues into the circulation because again the fluid shifts towards the higher osmolarity if the higher osmolarity is in the blood this would draw the fluid into the blood and that's why it is used in elevated intracerebral pressure and in severe hyponatremia because in elevated intracerebral pressure it would draw the fluids from the cerebral uh, from the brain and into the circulation and this would decrease the pressure inside the skull while in severe hyponatremia because it contains more sodium so it would replace the sodium in severe hyponatremia and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching please make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to support us more you can by subscribing to the patreon link provided in the description of this video thank you for watching and peace